Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I am only going to say this once and I say it the same time every single year. Where is the time going? It is the end of May. <laughs> it is wild. I literally pump the brakes this time every year and I'm just like, oh, half, half the year is almost gone. So anyway, it's time for a fresh favorites. And this was a weird month. I was sick. Uh, mid-month and it made it so that I didn't get to share some of the things that I really liked as much as I wanted to on my channel. So this is a very makeup rich favorites, but I have a variety of things as I always do. So without too much babbling on, let's just go ahead and jump in. Can I just say that I hope that you guys are having a lovely Gemini season so far. Gemini season is, you know, ruled by Mercury. Mercury is about to go retrograde. Just brace yourselves. Make sure you got your backup drives and everything. My hard drive already died. I think probably first day of Gemini season, my hard drive died. So that's why there's new intros and new uh, end cards on everything is because I was like, well, I guess you just kind of take it in stride. But regardless, the first thing that I want to talk about is this, this has become my mainstay. It's the thing that I like putting on my face the most. It is the Shantikai Future Skin Foundation in the shade Aura. And even though it's in a tub, it is easier to use, a lot easier to use than the Future Skin Cushion. And also I just really, really like the amount of coverage and the finish on my skin with it. It's just so luxurious and it really feels like skincare. So I've been wearing this all of the time and it's been in a lot of my video descriptions. I haven't gotten a chance to talk about it very much, but I've been absolutely loving it and Aura is like the perfect shade match. And this came recommended mainly by you guys, so thank you. The next thing is actually brushes. I bought this one myself. This is the Rare Beauty Cream Eyeshadow Brush. I'm not sure if that's exactly what it's intended for, but it is their eyeshadow brush. And I bought this because you guys said, hey, this is a brush that is for cream eyeshadows when I asked. And so I picked it up and I really liked it, but they reached out to me recently and asked if they could send me PR. And I need to issue a correction. The primer that I tried is a new primer. I thought it was their hydrating primer. It's actually a pore blurring primer and it's so nice. I like it so very, very much. So I need to really brush up on their repertoire so I understand when something is new. But regardless, they sent me these two brushes when they sent me the PR package and it is a foundation brush and a concealer brush, I'm assuming. But they are both densely packed and synthetic, which is usually what you would use for cream. And they have risen to the top so quickly for me. This you guys have seen quite a lot because I have used it to blend everything. I don't actually dip this into product. I just use it once I've already put product on my face to get a really, really beautiful, like gradient blend on everything. But this thing right here, wow, they're both really special, but I don't have a concealer brush this size and the shape of it, it is, it's one of those things that you can tell is born of necessity because the shape, it just fits, per look at that. It fits perfectly right in there where I have a very sunken in dark area that I don't usually bother to like really get in there and get the concealer in, but it makes such a difference to be able to do that. And it actually is soft enough that you can kind of swipe without it tugging the skin a whole lot, but like it gets up in here and it's just, it's just perfect. It is the right size. And I rarely get excited about a brush, you know, like I can tell you guys like brushes that I love and everything, but like, that's an exciting brush, okay? Like that's a game changing shape for a brush and it is just so well executed for what it was going for and they really are just the exact same brush just in different scales and I love them. These are all three of the current Rare Beauty brush collection and I've just started listing them under all of my videos because I use them just absolutely all the time. The next thing is just absolutely absurd and it is something that would never be in my possession were I not a YouTuber because it is so ultra expensive. But House of Siage has started sending me PR and I did really, really appreciate their formulas. They're really beautiful. I think they need to expand their shade ranges, but this is what they're known for. And it is this lipstick case that they do that is a bow and they sent me all of their nude shades and they are, they really, really run the gamut of like a nude for every skin tone and undertone. And this formula is absolutely gorgeous on their lipsticks anyway. It really is, again, kind of their thing. It's where they started. But I lusted after this little lipstick case when I saw it on their website originally. You know, I guess they watched the video and they just decided to send me one because I was just having an absolute fit over it. And I 
cannot believe that I have this. Like, look at this thing. Look at it. It is actually the Disney special edition one. And so it is encrusted in a bunch of Swarovski crystals and everything, but it's made to look like Minnie's bow. And it is just so extra. You guys know I have a minimal side of myself and then I have a maximal side of myself. And this just feeds my maximalist, Lily Sadugi, give me all the more is more um, side of me. And it's just giving me life. There's just something about it that's so unnecessarily luxurious that it, it feeds that part of my soul. So yeah. Also their lipsticks, like I said, the formula is gorgeous and this smells like vanilla. It's just... <laughs> It's great, I like it very much. So thank you to House of Siash for sending me this. It's honestly one of those like crowning achievements. <laughs> I just like wanna put it on display. It's like a little trophy. Something that has risen back to the top for me, I've been wearing it constantly. In the last favorites, I talked about the Patrick Ta bronzer contour duo because I've really been enjoying it. And Patrick Ta, it's not that surprising that a lot of his stuff rises to the top for me around this time of year because his whole aesthetic is around beautiful summery looking skin. He makes things bronze, he makes things dewy, he makes things look sun-kissed. And I love his passion for color and for texture. He does a great job. Everything that I've ever had from him, I love. And it took me a while, hello? It took me a while to fall in love with this because I thought that the color was just a little bit over the top for me, but lately I've been craving this touch of a really, really saturated pink. And I have not been using the powder, I've been using pretty much only the cream. And this is the shade She's That Girl. And so it comes as a duo like this because he really encourages people to, you know, powder and then put the dewy cream blush on top carefully, but like not that carefully. And what it does is it kind of gives a final finish to the skin that looks a lot more like skin instead of it looking like, you know, you finish with powder. And so when I put on my bronzer and everything, like today I used the Wayne Goss and then I used the Wayne Goss blush as well. I still finished with this and it ends up giving me what looks like dewy, healthy, you know, balmy skin, um, but it's not heavy and it's not all cream. It's a pretty cool little life hack, honestly. And I think him packaging it together like that, it seemed really weird at first, but it's actually so intuitive. And this color and formula have been just the thing that I keep reaching for over and over and over again, because once I get done kind of putting all of my makeup on, I'm like, I just want a really healthy rush of pink. Pink, 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 you know? And um, this is like one of those just like straight in the veins pink <laughs> colors and it's it's just so summery and pretty and it makes me feel beautiful actually patrick ta's like pr team or whatever reached out to me and they were like hey can we send you some stuff and i was like i pretty much already bought all of it but sure you know so i think they might be sending me some more of the blushes at some point but it is hilarious that you know it is actually my own taste i just have bought everything from patrick ta because i've just appreciated everything that he's put out and you know it's it's about to be summertime it's it's patrick ta season. Okay, couple of like duos here because I can't mention one without mentioning the other. So I've been really getting into this whole one and done eyeshadow thing. I'm like the last one on the train, but it actually is much more on pace with the way that I do the rest of my makeup. So these are the two that really blew my mind this month and they're both pretty darned affordable and also just kind of sneaky. So the first one is the Illamasqua Iconic Chrome Pigment Paint in the shade Alluring. If you didn't watch my Illamasqua video, this was just the formula that absolutely blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. It is velvety, it's gorgeous, it's what I have on right now, and when it goes on, it's like chrome. And then it spreads out really beautifully. It feels like a cream, like a velvety cream, but it's not a cream. It is a powder, and it. I think that I would liken it, I think I may have likened it in that video, to the Ritual Defee Ash and Ember, I wanna say, is the name of the actual formula of their eye set. And I don't like the eye set, I like the eye set, I just don't like the dumb little jar that it's in and it's also very expensive. With all the discounts that they were running at the time, I think I got this for around like $17, but even now they run an introductory thing on the Illamasqua website that's 25% off your first order. And so it is a very, very affordable eyeshadow and it's just absolutely 
absolutely so satisfying and gorgeous and I think that the shades are really beautiful too. And then this is from my recent Ulta haul and it is the NYX Vivid Brights Cream Color and I've used these before but only in their like really really vivid colors. This is in the shade Glam Rock. I want to show you guys something. I said Rock Glam in that video because it says Glam Rock slash Rock Glam and I'm assuming that Rock Glam is like if you were to translate it into another language. The words are the same they're just reversed because of the way that the descriptors work. Regardless uh, it is called Glam Rock. It's just teeny tiny and I just glanced at it and Rock Glam is actually like what's centered there. Enough excuses, Khaki. This formula is beautiful. It reminds me actually a lot of Phytosurgeons. Wow, Amber Aura and the NYX look so similar. Let me swatch those next to each other. Phytosurgeons is a little more subtle. And when I say subtle, I mean like um, there's a little more nuance to the color. They are very, very similar. So that top one is actually the NYX Glam Rock and the bottom one that's a little bit more peachy and slightly creamier is the Phytosurgeons. But you couldn't really go wrong with either one and I'm just so impressed with the NYX formula. I mean, gosh, it's just absolutely beautiful. It's coppery, it's satisfying, it isn't weird at all, it doesn't do anything funky on the skin, it wears for a really long time, and I was just very, very impressed by it. You know, when you buy things at the drugstore when you're usually a luxury buyer, a lot of times the drugstore stuff just kind of falls to the bottom of your drawer because you have some kind of like, inherent bias in the back of your brain about it. It's stupid, but that's just the way that it is. And this is something that's going to sit top shelf regardless. It's just a great one and done shadow regardless of the price. Okay, and the other kind of thing that I have to talk about in tandem are the new Glossier Ultra Lips and the Elf Ride or Die Lip Balm in Tough Cookie. Again, I got this in my recent Ulta haul. So I wanted to compare the shade Villa with this shade because they are pretty stinking similar. Um, the formulas are really similar. The Ultra Lip doesn't have a smell, but the Elf does. It smells kind of like cookies or like vanilla and it's absolutely lovely. And it's just a very pigmented formula. It's actually what I'm wearing right now. It's super satisfying. The main difference I would say between these formulas, and this might be even better news for you guys, is that the Ultra Lip, you know, is more of a lipstick and it's very, very pretty, but this is so emollient. The e.l.f. is so emollient and so like nourishing on my lips that it really feels like if you were to mix the Ultra Lip in, keep the amount of saturation to the pigment, but mix it with the formula for the balm.com which you guys know is one of my favorite, if not my favorite lip balm formulas because it's actually so effective at making my lips not be chapped. This is actually a really, really, it's vegan, um, a really beautiful formula on this. And it comes in a few different colors. It actually comes in a clear, which I wouldn't mind having either. Obviously it's e.l.f. so it's extremely affordable, but my gosh, it's just, is that not the prettiest? Look at that, it's, oh. It's yummy. It's delicious. It's just a really, really great formula and a really, really great color. Okay, let's talk about body care, skin care, that kind of thing. The first thing is hilariously random. My mother, she, you know, loves to just send me things from Amazon and not tell me. She just is like surfing Amazon. She sends me something and then it just arrives. I'm like, what is this? It is by a brand called Dylonic and it is this thing you put it in your hand like that. Best I can tell you don't like fill it with soap, although you might because it's got a little hole right there. I'm not sure if that's actually a hole. Regardless, I don't know how to open it up even if you were supposed to. So I just put soap right here and I scrub all the way from my neck and my chest, all the way down my back and my legs and everything. And if you're someone who likes a scritch, if you're someone who just loves getting scratched, this is a scratcher. This thing feels euphoric while it's happening and you can do it, you know, to yourself. You don't have to find somebody to scratch your back for you. I'm a back scratch junkie, ask my husband, but it's also very effective at exfoliating and getting the ingrown hairs out kind of, and it does a really good job of just kind of eradicating or helping to eradicate the KP that's on my neck. And it's so funny, I can tell because I can't get to the middle of my back and that's the only place now that I have KP bumps because I can't reach it. But what also occurred to me about this is if you're pregnant or if you've been pregnant, you know what I'm talking about. The itch of the dry skin when you're pregnant, it is like nothing else. It's like nothing else. Your nails just don't cut it. And I was keeping a wet brush 
<laughs> like a tangle teaser, you know, um, in the bed with me when I was sleeping while I was pregnant because I would wake up so itchy and my nails just didn't cut it. I would need to just rake that thing across myself. This is that good, okay? It is that good, like if you are pregnant and all you want is like full body scratches, yes. And it's not going to excoriate your skin. It's actually pretty darn soft. Like it won't comb through your hair. It's, it's you know, kind of this soft rubbery plastic. And you know, do you need another plastic gizmo in your life? Maybe not, but if you are like me and you have multiple uses for something like this, it is kind of a game changer. It's been really, really awesome. And, um, you know, I find showering the entire routine to be just kind of tedious and annoying. I just, I'm just annoyed by it. And I think it's because my skin is so dry and I just hate, ugh, I hate the, the whole to-do of it. But uh, this has made the actual showering experience just so, nice. It just feels really good. So anyway, yeah. And in the same vein of hating the experience of, of like getting out of the shower, mainly I don't like spending a whole lot of time in the bathroom because it's an opportunity for me to pick. I will, you know, just check out and it's all downhill from there. And so I try and make it as fast as possible and I try and make it as intentional as possible. And something that has turned my least favorite part, which is moisturizing my whole body into something that I love. And you guys are gonna be like, who cares khaki? What do you think? You're some kind of mad scientist. Okay, I've been combining these two things and I have talked about both of these individually. So this is the Aesop Rind Concentrate Body Balm. It's $97 a bottle, but you get 17 ounces of product. It is actually, when you crunch the numbers for a luxury body lotion, a lot more cost effective than a lot of the ones that I was using. And it's, oh my God, it smells like heaven. If you have not been on this journey with me, it, oh. I have a story and I will abridge it. It is basically that the first time I used this, it was at the Gramercy Park Hotel, the stay when my husband proposed to me. And so I love Aesop stuff regardless, like I had already tried their soaps and everything, but that's what motivated me to buy this is just because it's tied to a really positive memory and I love the smell of oranges and it's just very, very orangey, citrusy and lovely. And my mother fell in love with it when she came to visit and I bought it for her for Mother's Day as well. She is obsessed with it. now. If you don't already know, this is a body lotion from Function of Beauty, and I still love their body wash and body lotion. And they came out with a scent not that long ago called Milk Shake, but it's S-H-E-A, like shea butter, and it smells like vanilla. You know, I think they should be clearer with their scent profile names. They're all really cutesy. I wish someone would just have called it vanilla, but it is a really nice, just straight down the middle linear vanilla. It's nice, it's really nice, it's very sweet, but it's not cupcakey. And I felt like it needed a little orange, you know? And I thought maybe this orange needed a little bit of vanilla. And when I pumped these two things into my hand at one time, yes, these are the things that I do when I'm by myself. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. When I say that that is delicious, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, I wanna like lick my hands. It's so good, 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 oh my God. So I am now like excited to moisturize because I get to smell like that. Oh my God, it's wonderful. Like if I ever put out a lotion, it's gonna be dreamsicle scented and it's just basically going to be trying to mimic that because it's wonderful. It's so good. Oh my gosh, it's like this luxurious dreamsicle and it's making me so happy. So yeah, um, I needed to share that. It's honestly been one of my favorite things to do like every day. All right. And this combo right here I introduced in my Ulta video as well but I've been using this for a few weeks now, this trio right here from Good Molecules, and it has made such a huge difference in my post baby pigmented zitty skin. I think that they all kind of serve a distinct purpose and Good Molecules is so affordable that this whole thing, it totals $34 for all three of these. So it's the Glycolic Exfoliating Toner, which is helping my cell turnover. And it does it in a really, really good, like 
effective way, but it's gentle. This is super gentle. This is the BHA Clarified Gel Cream. This is actually helping clear my acne, and it's a gel cream. It's like really, really clear and lightweight. It's wonderful, and it feels hydrating, but it's, I still use a moisturizer. And then this is the Bakuchiol Oil Blend for dry skin. I said in that video, it basically is my last step so that I can be glazed donut when I go to bed. But Bakuchiol also has, uh, like it's a vitamin A derivative, I'm pretty sure. And so it probably also has a little bit of like assisting cell turnover components to it, but mainly I just think it's a lovely quenching oil. So they all have a really, really nice purpose in my routine. I'm using them alongside my my Curology, but I need to update my Curology. I just don't think it's doing anything. And I have gone back to using the First Aid Beauty Moisturizer because it was just what I had on hand and I just don't wanna buy any more of that drunk elephant. I went through it so freaking fast. And uh, I'm also using Mother Dirt and I've been using my light stim for acne just on little spots and it's been really really helpful but i noticed a big difference when i started using these because they all split the difference between effective and and gentle and not being irritating and i was just really really pleased with that especially the toner i really feel like the toner is like the big game changer because i talked i think in my favorites last month about that one that ren had sent me and it's great it's just about whether or not you like lactic acid or glycolic acid i think my skin kind of likes both so some people have it one way or the other kind of thing, so bear that in mind. But this is just as effective, less irritating, and a heck of a lot less expensive. So I had not discovered this yet at that point. Okay, so I have two more things. One is fashion. So <sighs> Farm Rio. Again, I talked about how they have a distribution center really close to me in New Jersey, and so their stuff comes so fast, which is dangerous. But my brother-in-law is getting married in a couple of weeks and I was going to rent something. I was looking around everywhere for different stuff and then I got the email from Farm Rio. They're like, this is on sale, everything's on sale. And I went and I was like, ooh, on sale because their stuff's expensive. And um, this dress was on sale, but it was still really expensive. But I, I bought it because I, you know, I'm trying to do kind of a fewer better thing with what I'm buying. And I saw it and I was like, this is a multi-purpose dress that is casual enough. I can wear it a lot of different places. I can just wear it as a day dress, but it's fancy enough that I can dress it up and wear it to a wedding. And it's Oh my gosh. Okay, I will put uh, an insert of me wearing it in because holding these kinds of things up doesn't make any sense. But basically, it's this gorgeous turquoise material with these printed bananas on it. But you can't really tell they're bananas. It just kind of looks like, I don't know, different colors and shapes and stuff. And so it's like yellow and red and black. And then it has this like tiny gold tinsel woven through the fabric. And it's just this really beautiful kind of, I almost think it's like a universally flattering kind of cut because it doesn't have any darts in it. It's not tight, you know, it's just very loose fitting and has like a tie at the waist and has a slip on the inside and it, makes me feel so beautiful. The sleeves are all like puffy and fluffy and the, the silhouette of it is so feminine, but it really leaves a lot to the imagination and it just feels like the perfect wedding guest dress because it's, it's cheerful and it's festive, but you're still covered up. You're not trying to steal the spotlight from the bride or anything. The only misgiving that I had about this, and it was something that I was able to fix pretty easily, but honestly, if the company is watching this, they need to know. Why does their stuff come reeking of patchouli? Like, guys, that is not a universally appealing smell. And when I say it reeked, I went into the half bath to try it on and I had to turn the vent on because it was like I was just completely trapped with that smell. And I don't hate the smell of patchouli. It's not like something that just like totally offends me, but it was so strong. It was like they had dipped it in essential oils. It was wild. It was like patchouli and nag champa. It was just like a very, very like, you know, natural, hippie kind of smell and I just don't I just didn't understand I'm like it, this is new right you're selling me something that's new but why did it just reek so I did some reading online I put it in the freezer I wrapped it up and put it in the freezer overnight that did a really you know half of the job and then it's a beautiful sunny day and so I just draped it over my back deck for a couple of hours in the sun and the smell is gone. No big deal. But like, they need to know that that is a very, very strange thing. Like what if I needed to wear it that day? It, I, it would have been an absolute like no go. It was, it was awful. It was really, really nasty. So anyway. And then the last thing is 
Masterclass. And I know that Masterclass, it like runs a lot of ads and everything on YouTube. They probably do some sponsorships. This is not sponsored. My mom had been looking for an opportunity to sign up for Masterclass that wasn't going to cost a fortune because it's expensive if you do it at full price. But they ran something around the end of the year, around New Year's, whatever. And it was like a two for one and she split it with a friend of hers or something like that. And she gave me her login. And the first thing that I saw and there, actually, I think that I asked her for her login because I saw an ad for this specific masterclass by John Kabat-Zinn and he is a mindfulness and meditation expert. And wow, that's what we've been watching lately. You know, instead of like a TV show, my husband and I have just been sitting there watching this masterclass about um, meditation and mindfulness. And it is just, Oh, it's lovely. I have been previous to this doing yoga every day, every day that I possibly can. It really, really helps my body, especially now that I had Simon, I'm naturally, I feel like, or right after pregnancy, I was like naturally more flexible because the hormones make you more flexible. And so I decided to kind of like draft off of that. And yoga has just been far more satisfying for me. I, I quit running entirely. My knee was just like really bothering me. And so ever since I've moved, I've only been doing yoga and I do about 30 minutes of it a day on the Down Dog app. And it's wonderful. It's really helped my flexibility. It helps my like my mindfulness and everything. And it's just a really lovely kind of time with myself. But to add on some of the insights from this mindfulness you know, video series has been so wonderful. The main things that really stuck out to me without just kind of giving you guys a synopsis of the whole thing, but he talks about ad attitudinal changes that you make that can really help with your meditation and mindfulness practice. And they include a bunch of things, but the two that really, really stuck with me were, um, the ones around uh, patience and non-striving. So non-striving being nurturing a process while it's happening instead of looking forward to being finished with it all the time. And I realized that all throughout art school, I think I never actually made art because I never nurtured anything in the present. I always was just trying to finish it. And it's because I always had a monetization mindset. I always was thinking, how do I make something saleable? And that's really, I guess, practical. And I was probably already in like a marketing mindset at the time without realizing it, but it's not how you make art. The idea of nurturing something and not really caring how long it takes to finish it is oddly, not oddly, because my generation is all like that, I feel like, um, but it is a, a, a brand, it's sadly, I guess, it's a brand new concept for me. And I really applied that concept to that haul video that I made and it is one of my favorite things that I've made in years. And it got a great response even from my mom. My mom was like, dang, that was so pretty. That You really stepped up your game. And I was like, I just envisioned it and treated it like art. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, but like it's very different from what I have been making. And it's just because it was so much about the process and less about the outcome. And I'm just trying to apply that to more things in my life. And I went to the art store yesterday and I actually bought some canvases and some new paints and stuff so that I can just start practicing that mindset without an outcome in mind. And that was what was so beautiful about non-striving. And then patience being, this idea that, I mean, obviously we know what patience is, but he talks about it, he goes, we're always trying to get through this moment to get to the next moment, to get to the next moment, to get to the next moment, because we think that there is some kind of destination in mind. You can see how these are kind of intertwined, but the main thing that stuck with me was he said, we need to remember that we actually have nothing that we're trying to attain and nowhere that we're trying to get to. And I was like, oh. I'm not making my bed because it's a chore so that I can go to the next thing, go to the next thing, go to the next thing. I'm making my bed and I'm nurturing that part of my day right now, making the bed. And that's where I am right now. And I don't need to be somewhere else. And he puts it so nicely, I'm paraphrasing, but he says something like, you know, learning to be right here is the best thing you can do because after all, you already are. And it's, I know that's kind of silly. Like it feels almost, you know, meta, but we spend so much time in the past and the future 
while we're not in the present or we're on our phones or we're just kind of worrying or we're kind of trying to place anxiety on things, the present doesn't get our full attention when at any given time that's where we are. And there's nothing you can do about it. So you might as well go ahead and just be where you are. Totally, totally game changing for me. I don't know, you just have to watch it. It's really, really good. Um, I, I don't know how to, maybe there's some kind of referral code or something for Masterclass, I'll try and hunt it down, but it's my mom's account that I'm using. But anyway, I cannot recommend that enough and now I wanna read John kabat book because, oh, he's just lovely. He is lovely. So, those are my favorites this month. Those are the things that have been bringing me joy in May. I hope that this was fun and enjoyable for you guys to just come and hang out. And uh, I, I really appreciate you guys watching. If you did enjoy this, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. There's a very exciting video coming up, so make sure that you have my notifications turned on. I love you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I will see you in the next one. Bye.